This giant B-52 bomber takes off at Edwards Air Force Base, California. Under its wing is the manned rocket ship X-15. The mission? America's first intensive exploration of inner space. This is a search for information, taking man high above the Earth's atmosphere at speeds he has never before flown. To explore inner space will bring man new knowledge, knowledge he needs to one day reach the moon and other planets. To begin this search, the X-15 is being lifted to 38,000 feet as the mothership climbs toward a point high over the Nevada-Utah border. There, the X-15 will be launched to begin its rocket-powered climb toward inner space. Transmission to ground stations of information or flight data will begin immediately. With radar tracking its position, flight control radio can help the pilot stay on his predetermined course. The X-15 will land on the dry lake bed at Edwards Air Force Base, location of the X-15's test flight master control station. The recorded flight data from the X-15 will be processed by IBM computers for use by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration in its continuing experimental test flight program. Since takeoff, the X-15 and its mothership have been tracked by radar. North American Aviation Company built the X-15 and it was soon called a flying laboratory. It is equipped throughout with a complex system of measuring instruments to record for engineering study the effects of stresses, temperatures, and pressures created during flight. For this rocket ship travels at more than four times the speed of sound, almost a mile a second. At Edwards Master Control in the flight monitor room, radar recording indicates the mothership is now at altitude and on course for launching. The air outside is a freezing 60 below zero, but in the cockpit, temperature is normal as are fuel pressures and other checklist items. The pilot switches on the recording system and data transmission begins. 10 seconds to launch. Five, four, three, two, one, drop. Fifty thousand pounds of rocket thrust push man and ship up through the atmosphere at a speed that leaves the camera plane far behind. At critical areas, the data recording system is measuring dynamic pressures, rate of acceleration, engine feed and fuel pressures, motion of the rudder and other flight control surfaces. This and other valuable information is beaming back to Earth, where the telemetered radio pulses are picked up by tracking antennas. These pulses are monitored on the console at flight safety control, where each meter reflects a critical flight factor. Radio contact with flight control and the X-15 pilot helps to ensure flight safety. Now the atmosphere is far behind. As the rocket engine dies, the X-15 is traveling at hypersonic speed. Reacting to thrusts of the ballistic rocket system, the plane maintains its proper flight attitude. Information gained from the performance of the ballistic rocket system will be valuable in the development of future spaceships. Altitude approaches 100 miles, up where cameras cannot follow. Beginning its gravity arc, the X-15 and man have reached inner space for the first sustained period of time. A thousand units of information never before known are being recorded and sent to Earth from one to ten times each second. As this data is received and recorded for later study, radar monitor indicates the X-15's flight path as it begins re-entry of the Earth's atmosphere. Temperatures and pressures begin to mount as the ship approaches mile-a-second speeds. Inside, the pilot's weight increases toward seven Gs, while outside, the metal skin is close to a thousand degrees and the X-15 glows like a hot poker. 
flight stability, acceleration, and reaction of the tail control surfaces is recorded. Flight safety is also concerned with the pilot's condition, such as helmet and suit pressures, body temperature, and pulse rate. Now the X-15 has dropped to altitude for pullout, where vibrational stresses and the pilot's weight are at their peak. The plane enters its glide path as it streaks down toward the dry lake at Edwards. The plane circles to lose altitude and speed for landing. With no reference for judging his altitude above this 10-mile expanse, the pilot must continue to use all his flying skill to keep from plowing in like a meteor. The spurting dust signals victory for the X-15 as it drops smoothly back to Earth with an invaluable cargo of recorded information. This first high altitude mission is a successful reality as the X-15 slows to a stop. It has returned safely after carrying a man to inner space. Now data processing begins in the Air Force's reduction center at Edwards. This is the flight data telemetered back from the X-15. Mathematicians have worked for months to equate engineers' questions about this flight and translate them into computer language. Information that would take thousands of man-hours to compute is immediately processed as the X-15 flight data and the punched card program are fed to the IBM computer. After processing, the recorded answers are fed into a printer which translates them into readable language for these and other engineers to analyze and evaluate. These are the first answers to problems met during this manned flight to inner space. It is this information from the computers processing data gathered on X-15 test flights that will have immeasurable value in speeding man's progress on the road to the stars.